This cool looking picture is actually the hottest place in the United States. It's Death Valley, California. It can reach temperatures up to 57 degrees Celsius, or in Fahrenheit, that's 134 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's in the shade, if you can actually find some. The temperature of the sand in the baking sun can be much higher, and if you were actually able to walk on the sand with bare feet, it would totally burn your feet. The air in the sand in Death Valley have a lot of thermal energy. In this video, we're going to define thermal energy and temperature, and we're going to distinguish between objects with much thermal energy and those with little. Thermal energy, by definition, is the total kinetic energy of all the atoms that make up an object. Thermal energy is the total kinetic energy of all the atoms that make up an object. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. So if you see a car driving on the street, or a baseball flying at you, or you kick a soccer ball or go for a run, those are all things that have kinetic energy because they're moving. I mean, objects that move have kinetic energy. But the things that we don't sort of understand ha that have kinetic energy as well are these little tiny particles. When you look at your desk, your desk is not moving, theoretically. You know, it's not moving, but at the molecular level, at the atomic level, these particles are moving and they're vibrating in place. And then the same thing happens in like an ice cube. The particles are vibrating in place. And so those, even those particles have kinetic energy, even though we can't see it with our eyes. The more they move, the higher their thermal energy is going to be. Or, you know, the higher their thermal energy is, the more temperature they get, the, the faster those particles are going to move. So that's thermal energy. I mean, temperature is a little bit different than thermal energy. Temperature is actually not the total. It's the average kinetic energy of the particles of matter. Temperature, write this down, is the average kinetic energy of the particles of matter. So if I did distinguish between thermal energy and temperature, I would tell you that thermal energy is the total kinetic energy, and temperature is the average kinetic energy. Big difference. And I'll demonstrate with this example right here. This pot of soup is probably at 100 degrees Celsius. It's boiling. And this hot tub is only going to be at around probably 38, 39 degrees Celsius. And so the difference between the two in terms of temperature is, is very different. I mean, the soup wins by, by a long shot. I mean, 100 compared to 38, 39 degrees, that's so much more, so much hotter. But in terms of thermal energy, the hot tub actually wins because thermal energy is the total amount of kinetic energy of all the particles. And so when you look at the hot tub compared to this little tiny pot of soup, this hot tub has way more particles in it than the soup does. So the hot tub, if you were to add up all the thermal energy of all those particles, even though they're cooler, they're only at 38, they would all together have a lot more energy than this little tiny pot of soup. And so that's a really important distinction to make between the two. Thermal energy is the total amount of kinetic energy. Temperature is the average. Let's take a look at these two objects. We have a sledgehammer and a nail. And the sledgehammer, let's say, is at 30 degrees Celsius. It's been sitting out in the sun for a while. And the nail, for some reason, we just took it out of the oven, and it's at 100 degrees Celsius. Which of these two objects has more thermal energy? Why is this important? Well, if we understand thermal energy, then we can harness it. Steam power has been around for thousands of years, but it wasn't until about the 1600s that we actually started using it effectively. That's when steam engines like this one, in this picture, began being engineered to solve the need for more power in farming and industry. And then soon after steam engines, like the one in the top left, were created, then we began putting them on trains and other kinds of machinery. And it wasn't long before steam engines were putting out 10,000 horsepower. That's like 10,000 horses. Just to give you perspective, that was a huge jump, and it drove the Industrial Revolution to really just morph and change the entire face of the United States. We were able to produce so many more goods so much more quickly. It was amazing. Today, we still harness thermal energy in a lot of variety of different ways, but one of which is the generation of electricity. This picture here in the top right is a nuclear power plant, and the white stuff you see rising out of the top isn't actually smoke it's steam. There isn't a fire inside, but it's actually a nuclear chemical reaction that's happening at the bottom of the tower. The reaction is covered in water to cool it so that a nuclear meltdown doesn't occur. And much of the steam that is given off is harnessed to power steam turbines like the one seen in this picture on the bottom. The steam has so much energy, the particles are moving so quickly that they're actually able to move the blades of this turbine around 
and kind of like a fan, it moves the blades of the turbine around really, really quickly, and that turns a generator, which then produces electricity for us. It's really kind of cool. So, all in all, we learned about three things in this video. The first thing we did was define thermal energy and temperature. While they sound the same, we now know that they are completely different. We looked at two situations in which two objects had thermal energy, and after thinking about them a bit, we realized that just because an object is hotter doesn't necessarily mean that it has more thermal energy. And finally, we talked about just a few of the ways in which thermal energy has been harnessed in our world to help our world and solve human need. Take care.